of chord playing this is the chords of blue murder and we're going to be talking about john sykes again and so far on this channel i put together a three for all episode for john where we looked at some of his licks uh, there's two white snake chord play episodes and also a thin lizzie chord play episode but this episode is going to focus exclusively on the the project blue murder which was a short-lived group that john put together you know shortly after he was kicked out of white snake and i'm a huge blue murder fan you know it's john sykes tony franklin on bass uh, carmen apathy on drums and that was the original lineup with their debut album, which is what this lesson's going to focus on. And what could I possibly say about John Sykes that hasn't been said hundreds, if not thousands, of times? I mean, he's a powerhouse, energetic and aggressive, you know, rock and hard rock guitarist. You know, great bending and vibrato and these melodic phrases. And then he can turn around and just melt your face with this energetic, you know, kind of hyperactive or shred guitar double picking and these speed licks and all kinds of stuff, pinch harmonics. You know, he's a package player for sure. And I've been a fan of John Sykes ever since I was in high school. And of course I heard Still of the Night by Whitesnake and I was like, who is that? Blue Murder formed in 1987 and they had some initial, you know, lineup changes, but eventually it became a power trio, you know, with John Sykes with Tony Franklin and Carmen Apathy. And that's the era that this lesson's going to focus on. Even though they did continue, they do have a second album. It was a partially different lineup. I think Tony and Carmen uh, do appear on that album, but then there's some other players too. And before the album was released, they were already out of the band. But we're going to lock onto that 1989 album because it's just loaded with great riffs and solos and songs. And speaking of the Blue Murder 1989 album on vinyl, uh, the prices, I've noticed, are slowly increasing over time. And luckily I bought the copy that's on the wall there for about $15, but I've noticed there are copies online that are $150, $170, or whatever. So it's becoming very rare and valuable, just a heads up. Or with the opening, that's the song Blue Murder, and we're actually in double drop detuning for this one, which I'll reveal why in just a second. But that means the low E and high E are both tuned down to D, and it's something like this. definitely in drop D. Like I said, we're in technically in double drop D, but we're not going to reveal what that is just yet. Um, but for the first part, we're just playing this massive D5 power chord, and it's the bottom five strings, technically. And then you've got this little single note riff that ends with a trill. Right? And you want to do that opening chord again. Right there, you're going to basically scooch up to where you're playing like this partial D minor 7, that C note and that F note right there. And then right there, you're going to slide that partial chord, it's like to a partial E5 and then up to a partial uh, F5, or I'm sorry, G5. So we're doing this that little partial F to partial E partial G, you know, back to that partial F. But I am kind of thinking that more or less as like a D minor 7. Right there. Or 
you could think of it as, you know, F, F5 over D. Totally up to you, but uh, got that kind of quick slide between those chords, which is really tricky. Um, Part, which starts with this A power chord and you're just banging on it. And you're grabbing that partial C5 over A. You could also think of that as an A minor 7 partial, you know, kind of implied. And then I'm hearing it move to this, which it's a it's a D over F sharp, but um, I've seen it, you know, kind of written with just a, a D over A right there too. But I'm hearing this D over F sharp right there like this. <laughs> seen it written, you know, or transcribed like that, and I'm hearing that instead of that. Right there, there's this crazy, like, overdubbed fill, and I did find some live footage with Blue Murder, and I noticed John did not play the fill, so it probably distracted him too much, you know, from singing and playing the guitar, but the fill is, is this. Or something like that. He's basically tremolo picking harmonics across four strings. So really slowly, he's basically doing this. And that top, you know, that top harmonic right there, that's where the double uh, drop D tuning comes into play. Because that's technically a D note and not an E, which is what you'd have, you know, if it was tuned to E. But since that's double drop D and that's a D string now, that harmonic is now a D note, so you can play that. So if you have trouble with that fill, don't feel bad, because technically it is an overdub, and I did notice that John just completely bypassed that fill when they performed the song live. So don't beat yourself up too much, you know, if you have trouble with that, because it is really hard. But one more time with this. Next up is Valley of the Kings, and they actually released a music video for this, even though MTV didn't really support it or play it that much. But now we're just in regular drop D tuning and not double drop D tuning like we had in Blue Murder, but something like this. <laughs> that D note right there. And there you're just kind of grabbing that partial C5 and then playing that against the low E. And that's, you know, really aggressive kind of riff in there too. down to 
that B flat. You're just banging on that B flat. Right there, it's kind of moving into this B flat over D and then that partial C back to that B flat. It's got this almost kind of R&B or soul kind of sound to it. And then it's A minor 7 right there. So that's A minor 7 partial, you know, or implied, and then a G5 over A back to that A minor 7, and then an A minor flat 6, you know, grabbing that F right there like this. Five power chord right there, and then a D. And then you're gonna do A to G to C, and then right there it's basically uh, D sharp, um, you know, power chord right there. And then you're gonna move up, and it's uh, F, like an F over D sharp right there. D sharp to F back and forth. And that last kind of chord tag is a, a giant G right there. And a giant D5. And then B flat right there. B flat 5. Cool song. Next up is the song Billy, and we're in standard tuning now, and it's something like this. swells and it sounds like a keyboard there's actually a guitar in there I'm doing that part so it's kind of a partial E minor 7 to a partial D major and then a partial A minor to a partial E5 like an E5 uh, over B right there so it's just these two little you know two notes uh, you know for each chord is, you know, implying a chord progression. You can kind of hear it. And then eventually you hear John, you know, enter with this double-picked kind of melodic phrase. And it's kind of hitting like a chord tonality. I guess you could think of that as like a C sus 2 sharp 11, like this. <laughs> thought of that as actually a chord, you know, like that, but he's picking through it, you know, he's not strumming it like a chord, but that's kind of the tonality he's flirting with there. So you're going from that C to that F sharp, which is your sharp 11, and then reach over there and grab that D note, and that's your 9 right there. And then it's going to move up, and it's like an implied, um, what would that be, like a D6 uh, at 11, something like that? And you're doing... So the first one... And that's answered with this D6 at 11 implied. But it's not really a chord, you know, he's really just playing, you know, a series of single notes. But it does outline, you know, this kind of... There's kind of a progression happening there in the middle of that double pick phrase. And just end that with an E power chord up there. And do it again. And eventually you hear this. an E minor 
minor seven he's kind of sliding into. He does a big, you know, pronounced slide, which John Sykes does tons of that. With pick scrapes and these big slides. But, uh, and then you hear the... seven and sliding into that E or you could think of that as D sharp minor seven into that E and then you're doing this and it's a single uh, single note riff but you're doing this E note five times D four times and the B three times so it's kind of cool the way it's whittled down like that tuning still and it's something like this. and dominant right there in the beginning right here that opening kind of melodic phrase like this so right there you're moving that F sharp to G F sharp to the low E open grab that F sharp again then you're gonna slide an F sharp octave to A sharp right there and then an E octave to C sharp you're going to do that four times in a row. which that pick scrape I did a minute ago was a horrible. You know, my picks are a little too thick, I think, to grab the strings. But you do a big pick scrape, and then you're doing this kind of squealy octave riff like this. back and forth between that F sharp octave and also the low E open right there. And you're just consistently hitting that squeal or you know pinch harmonic on that upper F sharp, that, that kind of higher F sharp right there. And that's kind of weird right there too. unison right there. And that A to E eventually. But that's a really cool song and I love those exotic flavors. Yeah, that Virgin Dawn is really cool. Okay, next up is the song Riot, the opening track from the Blue Murder album and we're in standard tuning and it's something like this. <laughs> You know, something like that. It starts with another big slide, and then you're doing this partial D minor 7 right there. And then right there, it's basically a C over E to an F5 right there. And then a 
big slide. And the second time there, you're going to do everything the same. That D minor 7 partial, the C over E to that F5, and then you're going to quickly slide that F5 to G5. And once John does all these quick kind of slides like that... really clever uh, kind of descending sixth uh, slide like this. Which I like that where it's kind of zigzagging, you know, it's going up, you know, the D, and then you're basically kind of cascading down and mixing and matching notes on the D and the B string like that. kind of cascading down. I mean, that's the big reason why I chose this part of the riff or whatever, because that's really cool. The last example is from the song Jelly Roll, and they also released this as a single with a music video, even though MTV pretty much ignored it. And we're in an altered tuning here. This is going to be basically a D flat five kind of open tuning. So we have D flat, A flat, D flat, A flat, A flat, D flat, which is really weird. That. And the guitar part's really quirky. It's it's kind of strange. Something like this. You know, something like that. It's really weird, and it's basically just played with one finger. basically doing this kind of slide on the, the top two strings and then you're doing a, kind of a percussive strum and then an ascending slide from the third fret to the fifth fret on the D and the G string and then a percussive strum and then a, a slide from the third fret to the fifth fret on the A and the D strings so it's really weird and then the second time one of John's kind of signature, you know, quick slides right there. And you got that really cool change. song too. Alright, that's gonna wrap this episode of Chord Play with the Chords of Blue Murder, and I'm definitely a big Blue Murder fan. I love John Sykes. You know, whether it's Tigers of Pantang, or Thin Lizzy, or White Snake, Blue Murder, his solo stuff, whatever. I mean, John Sykes is a monster guitar player. And I'm also a big Tony Franklin and Carmen Apice fan too, and to see the three of them working together in this project, I wish it would have continued. And I know MTV didn't really support, you know, the album like they should have. Geffen Records also didn't really push it the way they should have. And I think I've read that Geffen, the powers that be, you know, in the, at the label, they were kind of hoping that John Sykes and David Coverdale would get back together again and start working again. Of course, that didn't happen. And I think that's also why they didn't really push Blue Murder. They allowed it to happen, but they didn't really push it because they were trying to get John back in Whitesnake, I think, you know, behind the scenes. But who knows the real story? I don't really know but I have read that numerous times. So uh, anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content material. Thank you.